Hello and welcome back to uh, Custode Central. Today we're going to do quite a long video on list construction in June 2021. Um, we'll cover a lot of a bit of ground from a video series I did in January, but I think the game's coming along a little bit since then. Um, so what we're really going to be looking at is building your list for secondaries. So here I've got a bit of a personal view on this and well, some of these aren't personal, some of these are personal. So you can generally split your secondaries into actions or be somewhere and kill secondaries, which is kill something. And obviously kill secondaries are reliant on your opponent's list, giving you stuff that you can kill for a decent amount of points reliably. So from my perspective, I think action secondaries are more reliable to build for because if you build your list to do action secondaries, that doesn't rely on um, your opponent's list giving you something that you can kill. And I think with the latest changes to secondaries with um, the FAQ and uh, GT2021, I think lists that benefited are lists that can do a lot of action secondaries. And I think pure custode, custode armies, typically you don't have enough drops or they're too expensive um, that it makes it unattractive to kind of do these action secondaries, which is a bit of a shame for the army. Uh, because obviously if you're, you know, if your cheapest three custode unit is about 150 give or take um obviously if that unit can't shoot it can't charge etc that's it's quite a lot of kill power that you're giving up compared to you know like a 30 40 point unit in somebody else's army uh doing an action for them that they won't care about now from my perspective i think taking allies even if only for secondaries will massively massively improve your scoring ability and your ability to win games obviously some people will just want to stay as a pure custodies army um, and that's fine um, but just keep in mind that doing so limits your ability to pick sec certain secondaries and score highly and it's probably going to cost you a few games but i suppose if you're going for best in faction doesn't really matter that much so let's start with looking at battlefield supremacy now Obviously, engage on all fronts doesn't rely on anything in terms of the mission. You can always just do it if you build your list for it and, you know, it doesn't rely on the opponent's list. And I think if you have kind of built your list for engage, I think it should be like an easy 10 points. And on certain missions, it's pretty easy to actually get 10 plus points because of the kind of diagonal deployment where you can generally start on almost three table quarters turn one. So I think for this reason, this is a really good candidate to kind of think about building your list towards or building it around. And obviously this is particularly good on, you know, missions like vice intelligence, sweep and clear and priority target, um, just because of your ease of getting to three table quarters on turn one. Now behind enemy lines, this got a bit of a change. So you now get two points for one unit in your enemy deployment zone instead of hard requiring two units for four points a turn. Um, I still think it's quite, quite hard to do. Um, obviously we don't have the data because the changes has been quite recent. So we don't know whether it's good and competitive, but this forces your list to basically build as a, to have a significant amount of your army go into deep strike. And it also relies on your opponent's inability to screen you out, etc. And I think if you start telegraphing this during your picking secondary stage, you know, you're probably going to pair this with uh, repair teleport Homer. Um, I think your opponent is massively incentivized to actually screen out their backfield. Um, and on some missions, that's going to be very difficult, but on other missions against quite a significant number of armies, it's pretty trivial to do. Um, so I think, you know, in competitive play, this is, this is pretty difficult. Now stranglehold got a bit of a change. Now it doesn't require, um, more like hardcore, just more, uh, primaries than your opponent. Now it needs three or more at the end of your turn. So now this, this means you no longer have to like hold four out on a six objective map, which is pretty big. But obviously this is still bad on battle lines because there's only four primaries to fight over. And it's bad on the 3-3 three, three kind of primary missions like Retrieval and Overrun. Um, because you'll typically find it quite hard to clean the home objectives with just shooting. Um, you'll have to typically have to like commit a unit into a charge and, and clean it up through combat. Because you just won't have lines of sight to, to clean it and shooting. So this not fully as reliable, but it can be a good pick sometimes depending on the mission. And where the primaries are located. So the thing to keep in mind is stranglehold is situationally good. Behind enemy lines seems pretty difficult to me and engage seems just like a generally generally a good secondary to kind of think about when you're building your list. And now we go to no mercy, no respite. So no prisoners, you just get uh, the models you killed and you count their wounds excluding, excluding characters, vehicles and monsters. And I think this is 
you know, this this was a thing that was just a buff to Imperial Guard, so they don't give up um, kind of 15 points for then then their ranks. Um, so I think generally you're unlikely to score highly on it unless you're going up into just pure or cord or Tau um, if they have suits, but not the monster class of suits. You know, something like Krieg Horse, Horse Spam or Necrons with Scarab Spam. So typically this doesn't seem like uh, a fantastic change for Custodes Armies. And so the reason for this is I think most lists will have enough points into vehicles, monsters, or characters that reduce the wound pool that you can that would fall within the category for no prisoners. Grind them down is always situationally good, um, just because we do have an elite army and we tend to have less drops than other armies, and the drops that we do have tend to be pretty durable. So it's typically actually quite a good secondary. But if you kind of subscribe to my philosophy that you actually want to add in a few more drops into your list so you can take action secondaries, this makes grind them down less attractive to you. Um, and you may think about not taking it as a result of uh, taking these additional drops to do your action secondaries. But I think overall, it's still better to take these additional drops so you have access to the action secondaries than it is to always think you're always going to take grind them down. And for this reason, you don't want these um, kind of cheap sacrificial drops. Now to the last is the old um, while we stand we fight. So you just need to survive to the end of the battle with your three most expensive units and I think this is a very key one that people should be doing if they're not doing it already and because custodies don't have kind of codex specific secondaries and a whole bunch of other armies do um, you really need to build your list to be able to take reliable secondaries, and this is a pretty pretty good one into most matchups. Um, so just one thing to keep in mind before you actually pick it in a game when this is available to you, you need to think whether, you know, are the units that this lands on, is this are they likely to die in the game? And do you need to actually force them into the meat grinder for you to win the game? So, you know, are they actually going to end up dying, for example? So something like Talamons into Drakari, Talamons are a pretty good unit, but you are going to need to kind of, you, you can't have these Talamons hang back to, to live, to score you these points for to the last. You're probably going to have to force them into the meat grinder, and there is a quite high probability that they will just eventually die in turns like three or four, maybe five, but by turn five, the game's usually decided already. Um, so you need to really think about whether you want to pick this in an actual game, but certainly all, the, all of your lists should build for to the last. Purge the enemy. Um, I don't really like this because, again, you know, while these are situationally good to take in certain matchups, these are completely unreliable secondaries. So assassination, you know, you rely on your opponent's list, um, and I think generally it's hard to kill characters usually unless they're just, you know, hero hammering and they're, you know, yeeting them up the board at you. Typically, they've got lookouts. Sir, uh, they're buffing a unit. They're like the last thing that you're able to kill um, in that area. And generally, if you're able to kill multiple buff characters, you're probably massively winning the game already because you've been able to destroy the units, um, destroy their ability to get lookouts for their characters, um, etc. So, but it's nice that you now get the additional victory point for killing the Warlord within Assassinate now. Titan Hunter again relies completely on the opponent list. Um, with the new scoring, I think they've done 4, 9, 12, something like that. I can't remember exactly now. Uh, but basically, if they only have one Titanic unit, it used to give you 10, now it only gives you 4. It's really, really bad. It's actually a really good way for opponents to shove points into their list that don't give up a secondary. So, you know, a knight is about 450-ish, 500 points, depending on kind of which which knight you take. And obviously, if these don't give up, you know, 4 points for Titan Hunter is, is not a real secondary. It might as well not exist. So they now get to 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 park a bunch of points behind a secondary that that isn't available um because now they just won't have you know these points into something else that you could kill um so you probably yeah you're probably only picking this versus knight super heavy detachments and i think you know in in that i'm looking at something like triple magira depending on how your list is created you may or may not struggle to to kill all the knights, so you probably just want to play the mission into something like that anyway, um, rather than commit yourself to killing three knights. And the reason is, 
you may have like a turn where you get to focus all your firepower and you get to do your charges into the night and you kill a knight. But you have to remember in the return turn, they are, you know, that means your units are out in the open, they're exposed. You're going to get shot a lot. You're going to get charged. Getting charged by these kind of big knights is really detrimental to their health. And that now affects the amount of kill power you have for your next turn to kill another knight. And if you have a turn where you don't manage to kill a knight, you know, they pop their strat, it works on full bracket. And, you know, after that, you're probably not going to be able to kill the remaining knights uh, in the list, which may, you know, result in very poor scoring. Bring it down is situationally very good when it's available, but again, it's completely reliant on your opponent's list. Um, and typically, the reason why it's good is you typically want to be destroying these units anyway. So you're not really changing from your overall game plan to be able to score highly on the secondary, typically. You you generally want to kill these things anyway. Um, so yeah, so this is a this is a great secondary to pick when, when it's available, but just keep in mind now... Um, a lot of lists don't actually offer a lot of points for this because now with the change, there's a lot of vehicles and monsters with nine or 10 wounds, which used to give two points, but now only give one. Um, and this changes how this works significantly. And I think we'll probably see when this, uh, you know, when the new sisters codex armies start coming out in force, we're going to see probably more, you know, vehicles that, that only give one point. So let's go to shadow operations, uh, raise the banners. This is very mission dependent. Um, obviously, if you have easy access to two secondaries, it's an okay secondary to take. If you have easy access to three, it's a great secondary to take, assuming they don't have any kind of pre-game move or turn one abilities that allow them to block your rate, you know, block your action of raising the banner. Um, that can be very, that can be very awkward actually. Sometimes if you take raise the banners and they get first and they block your banners from going up. So what does this actually require? This really requires three infantry units that you don't mind doing an action on turn one. So if you have, like, for example, one unit of shield guard and that's going to be holding your home objective, that's actually, you know, that's absolutely fine for them. But if you've only got three infantry units in your army and one of them's Venatari and you're going second, you know, you may have really actually wanted to move up, you know, 12 inches and shoot something with superior fire patterns. You can't do that if you actually have, are stuck raising a banner. And in a lot of instances, staying there and wasting the turn raising the banner with these Venatari will cost you much more than the point for, uh, for raised banners here. So again, yeah, it's fantastic on stuff like retrieval and overrun because it's a 3-3 uh, primary mission and it's acceptable on, you know, Scorch Death and Surround and Destroy because you you start on two. And, you know, if you hold these two for the whole game, you know, you get 10 points because you get, uh, you score them again at the end of the game. It's not terrible, but it's obviously, it's not great because while people are saying, yes, if you score 10 points for a secondary, it's good. Like, while that's true, if you're competing with a really, really top list, they're, they tend to be scoring much higher than 10 uh, when they win. They're like they're just they're just super maxing these secondaries. So investigate signal. Um, how the book actually printed versus what Warhammer community indicated uh, makes me think there might be an FEQ at some point. I'm not really sure. Maybe Warhammer community just completely got this wrong. Um, but who knows? So currently the way that I read it, it's actually a correction from my previous video. It actually just requires no enemy units within six inches of the center when you um, when you start your when you start the action and when you end the action. So there actually doesn't seem to be any change here. And so because you don't get to you know you can't get to clear the clear the center before the end of your movement phase, it just seems very awkward and difficult to take, if I'm honest. So let's look to Shadow Operations. I think this is the new MVP secondary here. This is Retrieve Octarius Dacer. And you do an action in a table quarter more than six inches away from any other table quarter. And the beauty of this is you start on two table quarters in deployment. Sometimes you can almost reach three. Now, obviously, you can only do one, one of these um, per turn. Um, but it's also now got progressive scoring. So you now score 4, 8, 12 for two, three, four actions. Um, and... In my mind, I think every single competitive list should be building their list with their secondary in mind uh, because of its progressive scoring and also the fact that now maximum scoring is now 12 instead of 10. Like there's just everything is upside here. And I think it's extremely hard to screen out versus retrieve Octarius data because now the amount of um, the amount of the board you need to actually screen out to prevent this going off on a turn by turn basis is is like it's doubled. And even if they're just trying to screen out what used to be their old deployment zone, they now have to screen out 
basically one half of the map, you know, minus the six inches from each other quarter, etc. But this is now a much larger area and it's very hard to do. Um, deploy teleport homer. The, the change is you can now do it with a biker, which is kind of interesting for our shield captains. Um, you can be fully within uh, 12 inches of your opponent's deployment zone for 2vp. The thing is, I think 2vp isn't great, especially if you're you know, your shield captain on a bike has to do it. That's 175 points stuck for 2vp a turn. You may think that's good if, you know, you're a pure custodies army and you just need anything that you can score points on. Um, or you can do it wholly within enemy deployment zone for 4vp. Um, 4vp is fine. You're not going to get there turn one. Uh, it's nice that you can do it turn one for 2vp now. But again, this means, you know, you're not shooting, you're not making a charge, etc. And I think the best way to look at this is an escape valve secondary. If you actually just can't take retrieve Octarius data for whatever reason. Uh, let's look at Warpcraft or Pull the Witch. Uh, again, this relies on your, your opponent providing you some kill secondaries and you get 3vp for per enemy Psyker and 2vp for Psyker units. I don't think it's generally available unless you're into some matchups like Craftworld Eldar or Chaos, Thousand Suns, Grey Knights and maybe Tyranids depending on how they've built, um, you know, which characters and units they take. I think it's a decent pick into actually those matchups, um, but again, have a view as to whether these are going to be frontline units or whether they're backline buff units. You know, if they've just got neurothropes and zone thropes at the back and they're never going to be, you know, in the front of the battle and they're going to be screened out and you may or may not get their turn five if you win, that kind of a thing, it may not always be the best, even if it offers high scoring. Um, just something to keep in mind if you take any psychers, this will lock you out of the secondary. So you kind of have to think, you know, is it worth taking an Inquisitor or not? And I think it's going to depend probably on your on your local meta as to whether you do it or not. Uh, taking an Inquisitor is pretty interesting, um, if only just for the um, the advanced deploy strat, uh, which can prevent some kind of alpha strike armies getting within um, getting very close to you on uh, before turn one. Warp Ritual now doesn't need to be done by one unit for the entire game, and it's also got progressive scoring for three, seven, twelve. Um, it's a nice change to Warp Ritual if you take Psychers. Um, I think in a Custodes army, you're probably only going to have one Psyker, if you have any at all. And it's probably going to be something like an Inquisitor or a Primera Psyker. And I think that's too squishy if you have to get into the middle of the board, because the middle of the board tends to be pretty open. Sometimes it's protected, but generally tends to be pretty open in terms of um, you're not typically able to be in obscure terrain within six inches of the sensor on most maps that I've played on recently. If you do have lots of psychers though, like if you take something like a psychic school bus um, with a guard detachment with a primary psyker, an astropath, some weird veins, and an inquisitor, like I think this would be absolutely fine to to build into. Pierce the veil, it's just not a real thing, so just we'll just skip that. No one's ever taking it anyway, and neither should you. Psychic so interrogation, warp charge for 24 inches, but now you need line of sight. And I think this is actually, if you do take something like an Inquisitor in a list, um, this is actually potentially potentially interesting. So, you know, it requires you to have a Psyker and their army can't ignore lookout, sir. This is for the purposes of, you know, keeping your, your Psychic character alive. Um, they don't have lots of denies or anything that's going to make casting really hard, although, you know, warp charge four is not difficult, but it also means it's not difficult to deny and the characters won't all be hiding in the back. So you're going to want something that you're going to need like a consistent drip of characters is what I'm saying. Cause if they're all buff characters at the back and you know, they can kind of kite this distance from you, uh, this can be, this can make it a problematic secondary if you're not going to score highly on it. So the key points to take away from the secondaries is build. I want you to to build your list to be able to pick reliable secondaries in all matchups. And that means don't just pray for a matchup where you get good kill secondaries. And you should always build for to the last in every single list you create and try and make it land on a unit that's hard to kill. So typically it's really good on Telemons. I think it's really good on Shield Guard because they're such a pain to shift. They get a zero up save in light cover and they've just always got this three up invul. And if you pop transhuman on them, turn off rerolls, etc., it's really, really difficult to kill them like down to, to zero models. Um, it can very often end up on bikes if you take a big unit of bikes. 
I think it's less ideal because your bikes are going to have to be your playmaker unit and you're probably going to want to use them until they're absolutely dead. Same kind of thing with Venatari, but um, if it is going to land on, if you get something on like two Telemons and one unit of bikes or two Telemons and one Venatari, that's fine. If you have something like to the last and it lands on a Telemon, a bike unit and a Venatari unit, that's a bit more suspect to me. And it means like, yes, you've technically built for to the last, but not in a, not in a good way, from my opinion. Uh, I think you should absolutely build for retrieve Octarius data. And so what this means is you need two or three cheap action units that can deep strike or outflank. And the reason for this is if they're cheap and they can do it, they, you know, you don't have to survive a turn or anything. You just have to have a spot where you can come into the board and just do the action. You forget about it. They're like, you know, if you get a unit for like 40 points, 50 points, 60 points, that's fantastic. Uh, because now you've got a reliable secondary, whereas previously you didn't. The other thing I want to make sure that you do is you want to have three infantry units who can afford to do an action turn one for raise the banners when it's available. Sometimes raise the banners is just it's just better than retrieve Octarius data because you might save CP by not having to put something into reserve or deep strike if they don't have um, that ability on, on the data sheet, for example. And it will score highly. It, like you can score 15 versus 12, um, assuming you don't lose your actual secondary. Um, being able to build for engage on all fronts is nice, but it's not it's not as critical in my opinion as building for retrieve Octarius data or building uh, properly for to the last. And it's because you can even like the worst list, you can score a few points for engage and on some missions you can score decently on engage anyway. Um, so yeah, just keep in mind, you know, if once you do have these cheap action infantry units, you know, it's going to make grind them down worse. Uh, but I think it's absolutely worth it to get reliable access to shadow operations uh, category. And so for this reason, uh, I really like Sisters of Silence. So when people come at, you know, ask for comments on a list and, you know, they have a few points left over and they have an elite slot, I'll always generally say, what about a Sisters unit? Um, and the reason for the Sisters unit is they can, you know, they can hold a backfield cheaply. They can do an action. You don't mind about that. Um, or just take allies like Ashton Militarum. Obviously, I've talked about Iot and Gorgons before on the channel. They're fantastic because they have innate deep strike. They can deep strike within five if they absolutely need to. Um, they can deep strike for free. And if you're not going to do like uh, retrieve Octarius data, they can just start on the board and they're cheap and they can raise a banner. You don't mind about that. So that's kind of where I think, in terms of secondary perspectives, people should be thinking uh, in terms of their list. So let's now have a quick overview of the primaries on the missions. Um, you know, this is nothing's changed because none of the missions have actually changed. Just one comment from last time is that the scouring is often removed from tournaments. Um, some tournaments will have it in their in their mission pool, but I think it's it's getting pretty common now that the scouring just is removed from the from the mission pool. So what this means is you're now left with five missions with six objectives, two or three with five, and only one with four. So this is the reason why I want people to build their list for six objective missions because that's the most common mission that comes up. So let's have a look at mission 11. This is a retrieval. This is a one, two more mission. You can see you start one on your home field and you one and two pretty close um, on turn one. So assuming no kill secondaries, and this is kind of like a checklist for your army um, on every single mission. And we're going to pick the worst case scenario, which is you have no kill secondaries available. What secondaries are you going to choose? Uh, and so here, you know, you've always got engage. Um, if your list is good for it, it's good. If it's a really slow army, um, it might not be good on this mission because it may take you till turn three to actually cross the threshold if you don't manage to get any charges off or anything. Um, stranglehold is okay because here you're going to want three uh, and more than your opponent. What this means is you are going to probably want to hold these three and want to clean one of these, but they might actually be obscured from you know the terrain and the map layout because these are you know viewed as their secondaries. So stranglehold may or may not be good depending on your terrain layout. Uh, under no mercy, no respite, grind them down could be good. To the last is always going to be available. And for shadow operations, you know, raise the balance is fine. It's it's a little bit close to the um, to the opponent's side, uh, but generally it should be a great candidate if you think that they're not going to be able to flip your objective, and that might be very hard to do since your models are obsec unless you're vehicles or sisters. Um, Retrieve Octarius data is always good on every single mission. That's why, you know, these are, that's why it's in green. And minimize losses, it depends on your army comp, but their army comp. And the best case scenario, I think, is when your army has a multiple of four. 
Um, so if you have something like 12 drops exactly, um, means you can lose, oh, one, three, four, eight. Confusing myself, huh? Do we want an exact multiple of four? Yes, because four gives you half and half again. Um, and that means, yeah, I think 16 drops is ideal here. Um, because that will mean, you know, to, to lose 50% of your army, you have to lose like a complete, a whole number, basically. Um, if you have an awkward number of drops, you only have to lose one unit. And although you're like, you have 47% of your army remaining, you're not going to score points for having 47. You need the whole 50. So you're only going to score for 25% of your army. So that's why um, it's, this isn't such a big thing to build your list around in terms of number of drops, but um, this just means a lot of times it's not going to be great for your list to actually take. So let's have a look at Scorched Earth. This is mission 12, one, two more again. And here you start with two primaries that are nine inches away. And the reason I say it's nine inches away is the middle of the, the primary is 12 inches from your deployment zone and you get a three inch bubble um, all around it. So that's why it's nine inches. One thing to keep in mind is you may not have obscuring terrain that allows you to deploy it on the line for both secondaries. But even if you did, that means you've got, you've got nine inches that you've got to you got to travel and probably like maybe 9.1. Uh, so what this means is unless you've got fast units, if you've just got guard, um, you're going to need a three inch advance to actually tag the sec to tag the primary. And that seems really easy, uh, but sometimes you'll fail. And the times that you fail, it means you start out on a massive primary deficit. And sometimes just starting out on a primary deficit turn one is what will cause you to lose the game. So how I think about this is if you take fast units uh, or units that can advance deploy or you get a pre-game move, which guarantees your ability to get onto a primary objective in the mid board, this stops all the times that you fail your advance rolls to get onto a primary objective. And you might think it doesn't happen very often, but if you add it all up and you're, you're thinking like, you know, hey, I really want to increase my win rate overall by like one or 2%, it's things like this that add that build in consistency into your list that will help you achieve that in the easiest way, other than just, you know, get good at the game, etc. So again, assuming no kill secretaries, what you've got, you've got engage again, you've got stranglehold. This is slightly easier because um, these are in the mid board, whereas as opposed to the previous mission where the two, uh, where second, where primaries in the mid board were much closer to the opponent's side. So you're likely to have better angles to be able to clear it. So it's probably easier to clear the middle but just keep in mind the terrain setup typically tends to have it so that you get one that's protected more protected on your side and they get one that's more protected on their side which means you may have very you may actually end up having limited um, angles of fire to clear an objective for stranglehold so obviously we still have grind them down available until the last available um, and raise the balance is okay here these are pretty safe raising a banner in the middle is typically pretty hard because a you're gonna have to raise a banner an action on your turn and then you're now going to have to hold it for the duration of their turn for you to score it in your next command phase so you know unless you absolutely crush one side it's actually going to be very difficult to raise and score a banner on the midfield objectives retrieve octator of data again you can always do it uh, it's going to be very hard to get rid of raise you know you're going to have to do an action on their sec on their primaries and again i think unless you've built your list to deep strike loads of stuff and make reliable nine inch charges um it seems really risky and again you know if you're going for something like behind enemy lines teleport homer and raise your opponent's just not incentivized really to leave the board right so one two more they can just hold these two uh score 40 points throughout the game and they'll just give you nothing for your secondaries they'll just screen it all out um you can think yeah you know that means you score uh, max primary every single turn but the problem with that is you cap out at 45 so um it's not it's not actually as great as it seems so vital intelligence here we've got four primaries that are nine inches away minimum from deployment zone and keep in mind you know your your terrain might be like here so this is not now nine inches away this is really far away um, but you do have four you know if you deployed on the line and obviously deploying on the line is super risky because you might not get first uh, means you might just get shot because you weren't able to deploy behind obscuring etc um, and this is one of these missions that will really punish your army if it's slow and you don't have fast units 
because if they've just got a bunch of cheap drops that are pretty quick you know uh they can just get all all up on the board you know they may or may not be able to be behind obscuring etc if you can't even touch these objectives they just start on 15 that's again is really bad and there's no there's no real reason to allow that to happen apart from just laziness in your list construction um so yeah so this is extremely punishing if you fail your one of your advanced roles that you were counting on um and if you're having to burn cp to because you need like a four on your advance like that's that's a pretty sad place to be so again assuming no kill secondaries cycle allies blah 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 you can still always do engage this is really good for engage because look you start on almost three table quarters to begin with so even if your list hasn't built for engage you can kind of get a freebie here um stranglehold like with this many objections in the middle you should be able to get angles onto the one that you need to clean um so this is it's not too bad to take stranglehold here um grind them down yeah it might be fine to the last always good retrieve octarius data always good data intercept if you think you know your home field objective if you don't need to shoot from it if it's just some dudes hiding behind some obscure terrain they don't have any indirect you can put like the cheapest thing available there they don't have any deep strikes it's actually really easy to do data intercept repeatedly here um, as long as you think you're going to be able to hold objectives throughout a turn and you know generally with a custodies army you know you get some shield guard on like one of these side ones that's out of the way a little bit your your opponent's really not incentivized to try and dig them out because it may take several turns to do so and that's you know that unit could have gone and flipped something somewhere else so data intercept is is pretty interesting um but again yeah it's better against slow armies where you know you get to crush a flank you drip feed something here you leave them there and then you try and clear up the rest of the board and they don't have, they just don't have anything that can move up there and threaten it again um, if they've got loads of really fast armies like something like ravenwing or harlequins and they can redeploy like 50 percent of their force to be you know they're from here one turn and they're all here now shooting and charging you like that can be much much sketchier so let's have a look at surround and destroy mission 21 this is one two more again um, again, you've got two primaries nine inches away, um, 12 minus three for the thing, but you may or may not have obscuring that allows you to, to park on the line. So it might require more than a three inch advance, basically. And again, it's the same issue about um, starting out on primary deficit. Starting out a primary deficit for no reason is just really bad. And you don't have to do it as long as you're willing to accept some soup probably or you know add in some cheap fast units into the into your list so again engage is is okay it's much harder if you don't have fast units because you only start on two table quarters stranglehold is typically okay but again keep in mind the terrain tends to favor uh one middle objective per player in terms of uh how the terrain is layout laid out uh grind them down is always fine-ish to the last it's always good um raise the banners is okay you're typically going to get 10 um and again problematic score in the middle repeatedly with banners here retrieve octarius data is always always good and surround them it's the same issue with um flipping planning on flipping your opponent's home home primaries so battle lines mission 22 one two more there's only four primaries here and you know it's the same issue again with getting onto primaries turn one um keep in mind if they get on to one of them and you don't that's two to one that's still a 15 point turn and they're scoring 15 five so you just start the game um 10 points behind which can cause you to lose off that or it will more likely cause you to take riskier plays um to try and catch up this points deficit and being forced into risky plays to catch up is not a place you generally want to be if it's avoidable so again with the secondaries uh you've got engaged stranglehold here is is okay because you're only really fighting for them both and you should be fighting for both of them so this should be much easier to do um but stranglehold here means you still need to hold three out of four and if you're holding th if you can like clean them all on your turn it's it's typically an indication you're you're really winning the game um it's possible but to to repeatedly do this because you have to do it repeatedly to, to score it's not just like on any one or two turns you want to be able to repeatedly clean and hold three primaries is is actually a big ask for your army uh grind into the last it's always generally fine retrieve auxiliary's data it's got great on every single map vital ground it's actually pretty good um you're likely to to hold let's say one one of these two um 
on turns two, three, four, and five for eight points. And if you get to hold another one for more, it's kind of okay. But again, this feels like this feels like an emergency escape rather than something that you want to rely on in game. You really want to try and take secondaries that will let you score really highly, um, especially with the with the new codices having codex secondaries, which allows them to score really easily and really highly. So the scourings mission twenty three. This is a two three more. Um, here you've got these two second these two primaries which are pretty easy to reach. Um, this is only six minus three, so it's like three inches away generally. Um, so again, engage stranglehold is is actually a pretty good one to take because you expect to hold your two your two own primaries, and again the center of the field tends to not be obscured um, apart from maybe certain angles. So you should be able to actually clean it. And so Stranglehold becomes more attractive on a mission like this. And the same issues with grinds and to the last, you know, these are, um, you know, to the last is always list agnostic, really. Shadow operations is okay, but keep in mind you're a bit close to the other side. So they may be able to make a charge onto it on earlier turns and uh, risk your banners going down, etc. Whereas Retrieval Terrier's Data is always good, uh, as it is in every single matchup. Strategic scan. Um, you can scan each unit, uh, each primary point. Um, you get you get six points for doing two, but if you want to if you want to scan the middle one, like you you're going to have to still be there um, in your next command phase, and that that can be very problematic. Um, and similar to here. You know, if you want to try and clean these, first of all, you have to flip it and clean it. Second of all, you're going to have to have another unit do an action on it. Um, so that can be actually pretty difficult because you can't do it with deep strike because you can't deep strike within nine. Um, you can't do it with um, outflanks because you're not within nine from the from the board edge here. So that's not really going to help you out. Overrun. Uh, this is like a three three mission that I'm talking about earlier. Uh, so obviously banners is really good here. Retrieve Octarius data is good as well. Um, banners probably scores higher if you think they can't really threaten your primaries. Grind them down to the last. Yep, engage, stranglehold. Stranglehold here is not as good, typically because you tend to have obscuring blocking their primaries, which means it's actually pretty hard to clean them fully off. Um, and you're going to have to do it repeatedly to score high on stranglehold so this is why i think stranglehold is it's like an option it's not a great one though typically on this map tree of Octarius data always good overrun same reason um trying to flip opponents home primaries is is always a big ask and seems like a pretty risky play sweep and clear mission 32 this is one two more this is data terminals which means you get to keep uh, the primary until somebody else flips it at, at the end of any phase um pretty interesting one you've got one primary that's this is like yours and this is like theirs because this is much closer to you than that one is um, and you've got the one in the middle and you really want to be able to hit at least this one very reliably and you want to hit this with something cheap and the reason you want to hit this with something cheap is you want to force them to clean it and it and you losing that unit should not be very detrimental to the rest of your list functioning for remaining turns. Um, so yeah, again, this is like one of these missions where if your army's really slow and you fail this advance, you can just lose because you're now behind in primary points. Um, engage, really good. You can be on three uh, table quarters turn one. Just deploy somewhere close and just go into the table quarters basically. Stranglehold's also pretty good here because the center battlefield typically doesn't have lots of obscuring. Like there'll be some, but you should always be able to get a nice clean angle um, to the center of the battlefield. So if you just want to shoot something off, you can. If you want to make some charges onto it, you can, etc. Grind to the last, same deal as usual. Retrieve Octarius data, really good here. Raise the banners, really bad here. Uh, direct assault holds three points for holding the mid or opponent primary at the end of the turn. This is actually pretty good for custodies because you know uh, you've got obsec, and as long as you're not against an army that spams obsec like necrons, um, typically you have more obsec than your opponent. Um, so obviously don't don't pick direct assault into necrons, but you know into something like space marines where they have a limited amount of obsec troops, assuming they're not you know some special dark angels detachment where everything's obsec. Like typically, you'll have more upset than them, and your stuff isn't easy to kill, so it's actually pretty good. 
priority target, mission 33. This is a one, two more. Um, I can't tell you how far your primaries are going to be because they're all going to move before the start of the game. Uh, but even so, you still want to be able to hit, ideally, you know, the center objective and uh, your second A objective, because this one, even if it moves, is going to be pretty, pretty close to your deployment zone anyway. This one can move a little bit, uh, but you want to be able to hit all three um, on your turn one, ideally. Uh, so here's a good one for a gauge again, because you can go to three table quarters from turn one. Uh, Stranglehold's pretty good because there's only five. And again, the stuff in the middle tends to not be really hard to hit and uh, you should be able to get lines of sight to clean it, etc. Retrieve Octarius data, good as normal. And priority target is just an auto take. You just pick whichever one of these two is the most easily defended and you just hold it with your life for 15 points for the game. So what are the conclusions for the missions? Um, more than half the missions in GT 2021 have six primaries and you get between one and three for free on turn one. And so you want to be able to build your list to be able to take and hold three primaries reliably. Um, and that's to score more or prevent your opponent scoring more. And typically it's to prevent your opponent scoring more. Um, you also want to have some fast advanced deploy pre-game movement units. Um, so you can tag these primaries turn one. And the reason for this is if you've ever played a game where you've got these units and your opponent doesn't and you just start on a massive primary lead, it just makes the game so much easier. Now, the thing is, in an ideal world, these units will be sacrificial units. You don't want to have a unit of five bikes going up the board to tag a primary on turn one if they don't actually have any shots, if they can't make a charge. What it means is, You've moved them up the board so that they can now get shot and get charged before you actually actually get to activate with them. And so if these are stuff like your bikes with your Venatori squad, these are your hammer units, you need them to do work for you in killing um, dangerous elements of your opponent's army. And if you have to use them to score primary points, that's generally a bad thing. And I'd say, you know, if you're in a position where you're having to do that, you should have a look at your list again. And if if you end up in a position where you're in that matchup, you should think about actually giving up a primary deficit to preserve your units because your hammer units are how you're going to win the game. Like they are going to have to have pivotal turns where you know you create an inflection point in the game where you know this is the turn where your shooting is going to decide the game or your charge is going to decide the game, etc. And if these units get just blown up in shooting because you're trying to score a primary, you're probably going to lose. So. You know, this is why I say you want to have a sacrificial unit. Um, I would consider something like a palace even a sacrificial unit because it's not trivial to kill, it's not hard to kill, and it's not even that bad if they kill it um, because it means you know firepower going into something that something where they would probably rather be shooting something else depending on um, what lines of sight they have available. So yeah, so build your list from the outset based on holding your home primaries reliably and as cheaply as possible because obviously if you've got three bricks of five shield guards um, in your list, like, yes, that's good, but, and, and they're unlikely to flip them, but this now means you're playing, you're playing with, what is it? It's like 250 points. You're playing with 750 points that are never going to exert any pressure on the rest of the board, because like, while they have shooting, it doesn't really count. Um, and you are now going to have to fight something like 1800 points of opponent army with 1250 of yours if they're able to hold their three back primaries for like 70 points each. So you might have a point of, I typically pick up a kill secondary. Like, yes, you typically will pick up a kill secondary, but sometimes you won't. And my point is, when you play in a tournament where you get a series of games, you're probably going to run up against a list, and more often than in casual lists, where people have constructed the list to actually give give you no kill secondaries whatsoever. And that's an intentional uh, design element in their list. Um, and so when that actually happens, you can think like, oh, it's bad luck, or you can view it as like, you just failed to prepare your list properly to avoid the situation happening to you. So to give you like a worst case scenario, um, you know, your opponent might pick secondaries that are all action secondaries, and they actually don't really have to play with your army at all. So if you end up on a 3-3 mission, like Retrieval or Overrun, you know, they can take Banners, they can take To the Last, and, you know, if they're Dark Angels, they could pick Stubborn Defiance. They don't really have to move, right? They just plant their Banners, they sit there, and they wait. They don't have to go into your army, they don't have to play with your army. They're just scoring max points, unless you interact with it. And that means you're fighting into uh, defensive terrain. 
or into a psychic army. They could take banners or to the last and psychic ritual. And now if they've something like got Twilight Pathways, they can jump in, do the ritual, jump out behind obscuring. You know, if they've got a Swarm Lord, they got warp time. Or a more generic list is something that would just want to do engage. You know, they've got loads of cheap free drops. They can just zip around the board. They take to the last and they can hide, you know, let's say they're to the last units aren't even that expensive. They're like 150 points, but that's the most expensive unit in their army. You know, if, as long as it can shoot or is providing some buffs, it doesn't really have to go like into the meat grind. It can just kind of hide out of the back. And if they've got drivers that are doing Retrieve Octarius Core, again, they don't really have to interact with your army. They just have to play keep away from you. And if you're very slow, uh, you may find that very difficult to kind of kill them all effectively. So just to recap again, um, what do you need in your list ideally? Uh, so you want to the last units which are favorable to you. You want three infantry units that can raise a banner turn one. Um, and it means you're not giving up an opportunity to to shoot or charge where you would really, really like to. You want two or three infantry units that can deep strike or outflank to do retrieve Octarius data. And you know, typically you're gonna have one infantry unit that you don't mind doing <coughs> retrieve Octarius data on turn one in one of your table quarters. Um, and you want the two or three um, to do the ones usually in the mid, you know, in not your deployment quarter basically. Uh, what well you want, you want multiple fast units who can reliably reach objective turn one. Yes, um, talked about this repeatedly. If you fail to reach your primary, you end up on a primary deficit. And if you do reach your primary and your opponent doesn't, they end up on a primary deficit. And both of these things are, you know, it's, it's always better to be able to do it reliably. Um, and again, don't waste your how many units doing it because it'll probably cause you to lose the matchup if you do it with like five bikes or something. Um, and then after you've built all that into your list, um, the rest of your army can be whatever you want to in terms of killing stuff. And we'll do a separate video on what the rest of your army composition should look like. Um, but I think when you start building a list and you want to take it to a competitive level, like these are the things that I would do personally. Um, is it possible to do it in a different way without you know, thinking about retrieve Octarius days for it all. Like, yes, I'm sure it is. I'm still convinced your life is going to be way, way, way easier if you build retrieve Octarius data into your list. Anyway, uh, thanks very much for listening. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. Um, click the notification if you haven't. If you, I don't know, if videos come out and you don't get notified and you'd like to be notified. Um, pretty excited about channel growth. Maybe we'll hit a thousand pretty soon. Anyway, uh, thanks very much.